Hi guys, welcome to Tech Greens. So in our uh, series mastering Hadoop storage formats, today we're gonna discuss a very important format Evro in detail. So this video will focus on Evro internals. So guys, let's start. So let's see what is Evro, guys. So Evro primarily is a remote procedure call and data serialization framework. So I'll discuss in detail what does it mean when we say it's a remote procedure call or an RPC framework and a data serialization framework. But important thing that we need to uh, make a note of it here is that it is also used as a storage format for Hadoop ecosystem. So apart from many other storage formats in Hadoop ecosystem like Paki, ORC, Evro is also one of the storage formats. Though it has got a uh, different flavor, which is that it is also a RPC and a data serialization framework. Guys, let, let's understand what is RPC in the distributed computing. So in the first rule uh, in any distributed data processing uh, systems is that your code goes to the data, not the other way around, which happens in the monolithic world, that your data goes to the program and that's how execution happens. But in distributed world, your code, because that's small in size in big data and data is huge, so that code goes to the data, which is residing on say different nodes of a cluster and that's how execution happens. So when we say uh, it's an RPC framework, it facilitates the execution of that particular program, procedure or function on a different node where you may not have programmatically or explicitly defined that this particular uh, function needs to be executed on that remote uh, on that remote node or on that remote uh, machine so that is that that's all is taken care behind the scene when we use evro as a storage format so i hope you understand so when we say rpc rpc means uh, <coughs> with the evro the program or the function becomes intelligent and knows by itself that it can go to some uh, another node in the cluster and do the execution and programmer has nothing to do in that that is being taken care by Avro out of the box so that is when we say it's a remote procedure call framework um, now let's look some of the characteristics of Avro Avro uses JSON for defining data types or schema the schema of an Evro file is defined in the form of JSON. So every Evro file is contained in two, uh, two components. One is the binary data and alongside with it a schema in the form of JSON. And uh, Evro is uh, very rich in terms of facilitating number of data structures like arrays, maps, enums, etc. We'll discuss them in detail further. And also uh, as we discussed on the first point that Evro is also a data serialization framework. Uh, when we say data serialization in very simple terms, we can say when we can, when we're trying to convert the normal data, be it text or, or data in any other form, say into an Evro file, this whole process is called serialization, right? Apart from the fact that we also need serialization when we were moving the data across the nodes in the cluster because that goes over the wire. Anything, anything which is go, going over the wire, it needs to be serialized and then deserialized. So that is also facilitated by Evro as the framework. Right, guys? So let's move to the uh, next slide. So here, I quickly want to reiterate one important point that any Evro format file is contained of two parts. One is the binary data and second is the schema which is in the form of a JSON. We'll, we'll look into how the Evro, files, Evro file looks like. Now let's see what are the other details. Uh, as we have already discussed, the data is stored along with the schema within the file every time. So whenever you're trying to write an Evro data, it needs uh, a, a schema alongside with it. And that schema resides within that file. And how does it help? You know, now you have written the Evro data and you have supplemented with the schema and that schema is residing within the file itself as JSON, right? So it gives an it gives us an advantage when we come and try to read that Evro file. So while reading, you don't need to supplement any schema for uh, convert, converting into an object. 
because that read that schema is already present into the file and then it you don't need to supplement any external schema so that's how it makes your reads pretty much faster right as we already discussed schema is stored as a json along with the binary data within the same file um, and one important factor in the big data world we always talk about schema evolution because you are because you're not aware about the you know uh, not aware about that what kind of data will come right and data uh, can change dynamically maybe initially there were four columns coming later on same source may be sending five columns or six columns and when we were uh, trying to create a lake for that big data system <coughs> we should have such a mechanism that you know that schema can evolve by itself uh, so evro uh, is a perfect example here because the schema is in the form of json so it becomes very easy to evolve that schema you have to add another fill or say decrease uh, the existing field and that's how evro file can adjust itself according to the data and schema coming to a system right now the another important point the extension of every evro file gonna be dot evro and the extension for a for any evro schema file uh, would be dot avsc evro schema right so let's see what is the construct of an evro object when i say evro object means when i actually create an evro file and save it say into an any distributed file system how that evro file looks at a physical level what are the different components of that evro file so evro file contains two things one is it would we have a file header and with a file header it would have one or more file data block so this is the actual data in a binary form and apart from that there would be one header header is there to identify that whether it's an obj whether it's an avro file or what is the format and how to read that particular file Head, header if we look into the nitty gritty is how an header looks header is consist of four bytes where it is written sky and three letters obj and it would be followed by number 1 in the binary representation i'll just show you how actually a header looks like how a evro file looks like along with it it also contains the file metadata uh, it includes the schema and other things but to reiterate once again a physical evro file has got two components one is a file header second is the binary data blocks header specifically would be identified by four bytes sky and obg characters followed by binary representation of number 1 now let's look how uh, evro physical file looks like so this is how an average uh, evro file will look like if you try to open using any tool and now if you see the first line uh, it has that four letters obj binary representation of a number 1 so that's how a uh, that's how a physical uh, representation of an evro file and this is the this is how an evro schema looks like so let's i have created one schema so users.avsc it's got a namespace type type is that type is a record type this is one of the data structures provided by evro uh, name of that entity and then different fields uh, different attributes this data could have name favorite number color etc so this is how a schema looks uh, this is a code snippet if we use uh, any of the Uh, libraries here is a python code say we want to write or create one evro file so we can pass in the uh, schema that we have created users.acv and you can use, we can use the libraries to write the file now if we'll write the file here we need to know the schema and we have supplemented it with this schema now this schema would be <coughs> saved along with the file within the file as a json so this is if we have if now we have open the users.evro file again which we have just written we can see in between that this is the json schema as part of the same file itself the highlighted part you can say this is the json schema right we have got name fields and other things now now the interesting factor now we have written the file while writing the file we had given it the schema that schema is stored within the file now when we try to read the evro file we don't need to supplement and need, don't need to know any schema pre pre uh, before even reading the file because that is already stored within the file so now we can just simply go use the library and read the data and this is how we can we can get the output 
that whatever we saved, we never supplemented the different fields and attributes uh, and different metadata of that data we are trying to read. That is like auto read because the schema file is already embedded in the in the physical structure of Avro. Okay, guys, so that's it in this particular video. I'll quickly uh, reiterate what we have understood about Avro. Avro is one of the most interesting and major storage formats for Hadoop ecosystems. Apart from being a storage format, it's also an RPC and serialization framework, right? Uh, it the the important one of the most important factors with Avro is a schema is stored within the file itself as JSON. Now, as it is JSON, schema evaluation becomes very efficient. Along with alongside with it, Avro also provides you a rich set of data structures to write your data, right, guys? So that's all from today's video. Keep learning. God bless you all. Bye bye. Right. So guys, that's all about uh, ORC internals. I will quickly reiterate some of the important points. ORC, it's a columnar oriented uh, storage format. It stands for optimized row columnar file system. It is it is primarily developed with uh, developed for Hive systems, uh, as Hive has got a uh, vectorized reader for OLC5 formats. The reads and writes are, and processing of data is faster uh, with Hive systems uh, if in case the file format is ORC. We have seen serialization in ORC. Serialization is divided, is, is based on the data types uh, where we differentiate uh, how the serialization would happen on integer versus string. The compression codex available with the ORC formats are snappy, zlib, or none. Uh, the internals uh, physical structure that we have discussed for ORC has primarily got uh, three components. One is your stripes. Then uh, comes your uh, file footers and then your postscripts, right? File footer carries the metadata information about the stripes, you know, aggregate values, uh, list of rows, row positions, and things like that. Uh, your whether you, uh, while your postscript carries the information uh, about the compression parameters. The default size for single stripe is 250 MB, uh, and uh, there are three uh, elements inside a stripe, which is your index data, your row data, and your stripe footer. So guys, uh, that's it for the ORC file format internals. Thanks for watching. God bless you all. Keep watching and do subscribe to my channel. Have a good day. Bye-bye.